In this video, we will explore how to enter answers using WebAssign's graphing tool. You can always access detailed information on the graphing tool by clicking the help link in the lower left corner. First, let's look at the six buttons to the left of the graph window. This is the select tool, which allows you to examine the objects you have plotted on the graph. This is the line, ray, and line segment button. Click this once to display the three options and click again to plot a line, ray, or line segment. This button allows you to plot a circle. Clicking the parabola button once allows you to then select between a parabola that opens vertically or a parabola that opens horizontally. This button allows you to plot individual points. You can click the last button if you believe there is no solution. Let's look more closely at how to plot each of the graph objects, starting with a line. Click once to expand the Line, Ray, and Segment tool, and then click to choose the Line tool. Before you draw a line, you have to know two points that exist on the line. We are going to use the points negative 4, negative 4, and 7, 7 as our two points. After we place the second point, the line is complete, and we have returned to using the Selection tool. The line looks like this because it is selected. If we click outside the line, it appears as a solid line. When plotting a line, you should always check that you've chosen the right points. To the right of the graphing window is a list of the objects on the graph. Click on an object to see more information. It looks like we accidentally clicked on 76 instead of 77. If we change the numbers in the graph layer menu, the line in the graphing window also changes to match the points we've typed. If you know two points that make the line, you don't even have to click them on the graph, and you can enter the values in the graph layer menu. Only enter points that are within the range of the graphing window. You can't plot the point 500, 700, because it is outside of the range of the graphing window. If you're working with inequalities, you may need to draw a dashed line instead of a solid line. You can do this by drawing a line, selecting the line, and then clicking the dash button in the graph layers menu. You can change a dashed line back to a solid line by clicking the button again. To indicate the solution set of the inequality, we use the fill tool to highlight the correct area. Notice that when we click on the Fill tool, we're given a message that instructs us to always use the Fill tool last. You can click to fill the area you want. We were given the message to always use the Fill tool last, because if we select another graphing object tool from the left, it will remove the filled region. You can plot a circle by clicking the Circle button, selecting the center of the circle, and then clicking to select a point on the circle itself. The Parabola button expands into options for parabolas that open vertically and parabolas that open horizontally. Click again to select one of the two options. You can draw a parabola by first plotting its vertex, and then plotting a point that can be found on the parabola. Like with the Line tool, it may be easier to enter the coordinates of the points in the Graph Layer tool instead of trying to click on the graphing window. You can plot individual points on the graph by clicking the Points tool, and then clicking to create the points. You can plot several points consecutively without reselecting the Points tool from the menu. If the question requires you to plot a line in your answer, do not first use the Points tool. Including extra graphing objects, such as points, may result in your answer being rejected. 